Right here we have an LED light bulb that uh, burnt out while installed in the garage door opener at my house. And uh, we're going to plug it in and see what happens, see if we get any power draw. And, and then we're going to tear it apart and do a little autopsy and see what's inside this thing. Well, we got a little bit of flicker. You can see it's trying to start up. I think it uh, doesn't seem to be too happy there. I'm not getting any power consumption. So, obviously something's gone wrong there. Well, let's go ahead and unplug it. It's weird that it gets brighter when we unplug it. Let's try that again. Hmm. Alright, we'll get this flickery meter out of the way here. Alright, we're going to bring in... Uh, Persuasion tool and try and get this thing opened up. Start to get some break over here. All right, we're in. All right, so there it is. Uh, looks fairly simple. We've got a MOSFET on there of some kind. Uh, a couple resistors. There's got to be something in there. I wonder if that's a specialized chip. I can see something. I'm gonna get in. Uh, see if we can get in close on this. Uh, I see something. Looks pretty suspicious right in here. Oh. That LED right there has got a black dot in it. So I'm wondering if we see that on any of these other LEDs. Doesn't look too bad. That one's got a black dot on it. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna plug this right back in and. Uh, See if that LED lights up, and I'm gonna keep uh, keep good distance here. Hmm, looks like it's still lighting up. All right, let's connect that. Hmm. Well, time to get a screwdriver. We'll go a little deeper. This is the point in the video where I stab myself. All right, so we're gonna remove this adhesive around the edge here. Let's see if we can get in here. All right, that came off way too easy. Got a couple spots here. This isn't gonna come out. I can see metal around the edges. This might be. Apart. Ah, there's a little power supply in there. Let's do that. It's not plugged in. Alright, there's a little power supply down there in the base. That is not going to be easy to get to. So we have LED plus and LED minus. That looks too simple to be a switching power supply. I bet you that's just a bridge rectifier and a capacitive dropper. Look inside the back here. This is a uh, non-dimmable LED light, so good, good. It's a Utilitech brand, uh, nine watt, three thousand K, seven hundred fifty lumens. So it's a good chance that this is just a capacitive dropper in there. 
and they have a what looks like a fairly decent sized filter capacitor. It's weird that it was such a simple circuit would fail like this. Let's see if we can get a number off that chip. How do I measure the DC voltage? This should be smooth DC. Make sure our multimeters are on the right plugs here. Going around the wrong way here, but we should be getting quite a bit more than that. If you can get good contact here, which I can't. Hmm. This is on an isolated power supply, by the way. So we aren't just. Uh, Totally connected. There we go. 171 volts DC. That's exactly what it should be. All right, I'm gonna unplug it again. I'm just going to plug it back in. I want to take a look at that and see which, which LED turns off first or if any of them are operating any differently than others. They all look okay. Oh, now it's totally off. It's very interesting. So we have that LED with the black dot on it. We're very suspicious that that's the bad LED. So I have the meter set to um, amps right now. And so these probes are basically a short. So we'll go ahead and connect these probes across that LED that we're suspicious is bad. And there we go. Working just fine now. So that LED, wow, see that? That LED is the bad one. So as soon as we take that out of the circuit, everything works fine. Just some numbers for you. It's using about 9 watts and it's got a terrible power factor since we're using a capacitive dropper. Alright. Well, we know what's wrong with this one, so we can fix it by shorting out that LED, but I'm not going to since I don't really feel like putting this one back together. It's about a $2 light bulb, so uh, maybe we'll steal a capacitor out of there or something, but other than that, it's uh, just lower this down to milliamps now, so we're just going to uh, short out that bad LED again and see if we can get a reading for how much current's going through this. Might not be able to see it. We got about 58.8 milliamps. Let's do that one more time. See if we can see it on the screen. It might be washed out. Oh, should be able to see that. 58.8. All right. Neat. All right, here we got some schematic for this LED light. Uh, so over here we have our 120 volts AC coming in. It goes through. My board got messed up here. A couple of 1 mega ohm resistors and a 33 or 0.33 microfarad 250 volt capacitor. It's definitely not suitable for uh, European use. Um, full bridge rectifier. There's a 200 volt 15 microfarad capacitor and a 300k resistor across that. All this stuff is contained inside that little board inside the back of the LED. And then there's two wires that go over to the secondary board. We have our string of LEDs, and we have a chip. That generic chip there is an SK20820 uh, constant current LED driver, and that's got a 12 ohm and an 82 ohm resistor for its uh, control path. Um, it ends up being about 58 milliamps. Um, that's about it. It's an LED light bulb. It's pretty cheap, built down to a price. Um, it lasted about a year, and then uh, one of those LED chips failed. So pretty much as expected, I guess. I uh, put one more in and that one's been working ever since. We'll see if it makes it a year. Thanks for watching.